Hey, been asked this question by a few people. The reaction of aluminum to heavy magnetic fields. Over here, by the way, I have the universe's most diamagnetic element, bismuth, which I'll basically not be using for this demonstration. Over here, I have a couple of heavy sheets of pure copper. This is just simple aluminum foil, a thin piece. Now, as I've explained to you before, every magnet you could actually test with this test this with a gauss meter has an extremely strong centrifugal field here an intermediate zone of low gaussian flux and a strong flux at the center basically what we have here is a centrifugal vortex going outwards and reciprocating to the center of the other side now what we have here is a centripetal vortex kind of like pulling the drain on your bathtub now it is said that aluminum is paramagnetic Okay, it uh, is a fact, certainly, that bismuth is the universe's most diamagnetic. Eh, what do we mean by diamagnetic? Let's just say it has incredibly low magnetic permeability. Very simple, or hates magnetism. Um, same is true of copper. Have you seen prior videos? I've actually taken this uh, two heavy sheets of copper, and I've actually dropped them on that gigantic monster magnet, and it's not so visible here. You can feel it, but you can't see it. It'll actually float down like a feather once you actually drop these heavy sheets. Instead of dropping down on the super huge magnet, it'll just feather down like that and finally rest. And I've shown that before in other videos. So, what about aluminum? What does paramagnetic mean? Everything in the universe is magnetic. There are only four principles that rule the universe. Resistance, capacitance, permeability, and permittivity. Magnetic permeability, dielectric permittivity. So paramagnetic is no different than saying it has both permeability characteristics and permittivity characteristics. Okay? By the way, there's no such thing as superconductivity. What we actually refer to as superconductivity is insanely low magnetic permeability. I, at a very young age, messed around with superconductor sets made out of neodymium iron boron magnets, little tiny ones, and yttrium barium copper oxide discs, which were the ceramic platters which were chilled to the temperatures of liquid nitrogen. I was probably the only teenager that had liquid nitrogen dewar flasks. So let's actually take a look at something here and let's explain magnetism and let's take a look at some interesting, seemingly contradictory properties. But when you know how the hell a magnet works, you'll understand the secrets of magnetism and why it does this. Because you have to remember, we have centrifugal vortex here, out. We have a centripetal vortex here going in, right? So. Now you think this is the air, it's not the air. I'm actually not touching it, nor is it an air current. You think that would be the case because it's aluminum. This is just a piece of foam, by the way. Black foam, some uh, magazines underneath it. So right now I'm actually using the centrifugal vortex to push the aluminum away, not air currents, okay? Now, what do you think is gonna happen if I place the magnet over top of the aluminum and lift up on it? Remember, aluminum is paramagnetic, a term that really doesn't mean anything. The entire universe and all the atoms, the interatomic uh, radius of any atom is composed out of magnetodielectricity. The radius of every atom in picometers is magnetodielectricity. Certain elements, be that aluminum or bismuth or copper, have certain percentages or rates that we define them as either diamagnetic or paramagnetic or uh, magnetic or ferromagnetic. Now, as I showed you in many prior videos when I actually place the universe's most diamagnetic element, meaning hates magnetism, at the center of the super huge magnet, which I don't have right now, it's right over here, um, it is actually attracted to the center of the magnet, but around the edge, it is repelled away from it. You actually wave that giant monster magnet over top of this uh, bismuth ball, and it is repelled here, but it is attracted at the center. And aluminum operates no differently. So knowing that, what we know is aluminum being paramagnetic, meaning it has both magnetic ferromagnetic properties and the diamagnetic properties. I showed you diamagnetic properties when I actually pushed it away doing this. This is a demonstration of uh, diamagnetic properties. I'm using the centrifugal edge of the field to literally sweep the aluminum along its way here. Those aren't air currents, okay? That's actually the, uh, the centrifugal vortex. So, since now I'm going to place the magnet and the center of the magnet over top of the aluminum, what's going to happen if I lift it up? Let's see. Yep. Let's do that again. Okay. 
Let's get on a lower angle here, right? Okay, now let's take a look at something else. Oh, okay, so that was a demonstration of ferromagnetism. Ferromagnetism, well, what's paramagnetic? That doesn't mean anything. It means aluminum has almost equal properties of attractive to magnetism, but as I've told you before, and this seems co so complicated to people in their brains, they don't realize it, and modern science has not yet figured it out, but you can actually see it with a Gauss meter. You take an expensive Gauss meter, you'll see a high Gaussian flux at the center, and an intermediate zone, and a high Gaussian flux here at the center, versus, you know, it's high here, high in the center, intermediate in the middle, and also high around the edge. But magnetism isn't magnetism. Well, what the hell does that statement mean? Magnetism isn't magnetism. That means that the magnetism that is here is completely unlike the magnetism that is here. Well, they both show the same Gaussian flux. That's right. The problem being, however, that a Gauss meter does not differentiate between centrifugal magnetism and centripetal magnetism. That is why when I do this, pushing the aluminum away. But I'm going to show you something else here in a second. When I do this, it lifts the aluminum up. It's attracted to the point of, you know, just like a, a vacuum. You know, pull the drain on your tub, water goes down the drain, the aluminum is attracted here. Oh, well, that's just me. Aluminum is paramagnetic. Descriptions are not explanations. So, let's place it on the top here. Let's show you two more different things, okay? Now it's just resting on the top. No glue, no stickiness. Okay, I'm gonna try to shake it off. It doesn't want to shake off. No, I'm shaking it violently. Eventually it will shake off. You know, air currents actually capture it, and uh, we'll actually yank it off there as it gets caught between the aluminum and the magnet. But, you know, it doesn't want to come off. Eventually it will. But it's attracted to the centripetal point. Now, I'm going to show you something that is exactly what the copper plates do over top of the giant magnet. Where you drop these huge, heavy copper plates over the top of the giant magnet, they'll flutter down really lightly like a feather. Aluminum will do the same. Why? Because the centrifugal magnetism is pushing against the aluminum like a jet is raising. You ever seen like a jet of water like push up a beach ball? So, let me see if you can see this properly. Try it yourself. It'll actually push it off to one side or the other. But it'll never fall off to the side usually because there's a centripetal point right here that is attracted to. You see that? We also have air currents to mess with on doing this, of course, so. Well, it's like, well, here we, it looks like the aluminum doesn't like magnetism. No, it only doesn't like this part. It loves this part. Hates this part. Oh, that's paramagnetism. Paramagnetism is a description, not an explanation. Modern science has not yet discovered the fact that while this is magnetism and this is magnetism, this is radically different from this. Hardcore fact, I will put my life on the line, everything that I hold dear. I'm not a gambling person, but I'm telling you that right now. If you believe nothing else, you better understand that. This is magnetism and this is magnetism, but this is radically different than this is. Get it? Good. Because... Lift the aluminum up this way. Oh, it's attracted to the magnet. Now it's attracted to the centripetal part of the magnet. Well, if I do this number, you know, well, let me move it here where you can see it. It's not air currents. That's actually the centrifugal magnetism pushing the aluminum away. Now the aluminum does not like this part. does not like the centrifugal portion of the magnet. No, it does not. It loves the central part. If I just place it there, doesn't really want to come off. It's stuck there because it loves this part. It hates this part. Pretty simple to understand. Oh, paramagnetism. Everything in the universe is magnetic. Only four principles. Resistance, capacitance, permeability, and permittivity. As I said, there's no such thing as superconductivity, too, by the way, because I've been messing with superconductors, uh, super, excuse me, superconductors, which uh, the ones I were messing with were yttrium, barium, copper oxide. It is nothing other than super chilled ceramic yttrium barium copper oxide or some other uh, ceramics that have insanely low magnetic permeability. They basically become bulletproof vests to magnetic field centrifugal emanations. That is why those little magnets will actually ride on top of those yttrium barium oxide discs that are super chilled to liquid nitrogen temperatures. Because when you super chill like a yttrium barium copper oxide, it basically becomes a bulletproof vest to magnetism. And so when you place the little magnet over top of it, it floats in the air. 
That's not superconductivity. That is nothing other than insanely low magnetic permeability. Mother Nature doesn't have a calculator. Cosmic mechanics are a lot simpler than that. Okay? So now, using aluminum as a demonstration, you're able to see that there's a radical difference between this and this because I'm able to show you by using the edge of the magnet I'm able to sweep the aluminum away, but by using the center of the magnet, I'm able to lift it up and attract it. The aluminum loves the center of this magnet. It hates the outer part. If that is not simple enough, then I don't know what else could be simpler. That's as simple as it gets, baby. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, you can always drop a buck or two via PayPal in the link below. Or you can tell me to jump off a cliff. Whatever makes you happy. Okay? Thanks for watching. Bye!